Celtic crosses have a long history in Celtic art, especially in stone carving. So this week, I'm going to show you how to draw one. Coming right up. Hello everyone, I'm Carrie Buziak of Aeon Celtic Art. I'm a published author and a Celtic artist teaching modern techniques and ancient art. I've been teaching this method from my website for the last 25 years and as well in my book Creating Celtic Knotwork by Dover Publications. Before we get started today, make sure you ring the bell below and subscribe to my channel so you're kept up to date on any new tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to create a basic Celtic cross in a couple different formats. The method today is the same as we've done in previous weeks using the grid technique. So if you're finding things are going a little too fast, check the basic knot tutorial and the fancy knot tutorial and do a little refresher. Now grab your Aeon dot paper, the link is below to download that and let's get started. I'm going to begin with a fairly simple cross design. It'll be three big dots by three big dots for each of the arms. I just made them equal length here as you can see. And I'll just zoom into the project here. To make the design a little more interesting, I'm going to jut it out at the corners, so in that inner armpit between the two arms, and I'm just going to jut it out by one big dot. So again, always starting and turning on a big dot for those corners, just like we did for the border and frame tutorial. And I'll just repeat that little jut out in all the other corners. So that'll readjust our outside border so it looks something more like this. To make it a little more interesting, I'm going to add some walls inside, as you see here, making it symmetrical across the design. Next, I find one of the small dots in the design so I can add my tipped over tic-tac-toe pattern. And I'll just continue adding those until I've added them to all the small dots within the design. Again, we're skipping the ones that are crossed off on our border, crossed off by the walls, or that fall outside of our design. And then I begin to add our corners. I add them around the outside of the design and as well the inner ones that point into those walls we added. I still have a few unjoined areas right in the center there so I add some bends or elbows to connect up those remaining lines. And now the weaving. Again it doesn't matter which intersection you choose to start at. I'm going to start with that very topmost one there. So I erase it in one direction and then following the arrow for the rest of my erasings. If I've just come from an under, then the next one must be an over, and then an under, and so on until the design is complete. I'll just remove the dot paper and wrap a border around the outside like we see frequently in the Celtic manuscripts. Now let's work on a variant of this cross. As I've always said, the grid technique is nothing more than a tool, so we can manipulate it to make it do what we want. So let's head back to the beginning. Here we have our initial design again, three big dots wide by three big dots high. Previously we had jutted out that corner, going out by one big dot and then down by one big dot. This time I'm going to offset it. So instead of that little box being added onto the outside edge of that big border, it's going to kind of straddle that boundary line. Now technically we've made an error because remember that outside boundary box can only hinge on big dots. Whereas here, we're actually jutting out for this corner from a little dot. And remember that the pattern will only work out if you're going from big dot to big dot. So we know this is going to break our grid pattern within the cross, but I'll show you how we'll deal with that. So we'll just copy that square into the other corners as well so it's symmetrical. Picking one of the small dots in my pattern, I add my tipped over tic-tac-toes just like I always do. With those in place, I add my outer corners and then connect my bends or elbows. Now we already know that we've broken the pattern and here's where that shows up. You see we have two open ends here with nothing to connect to, but I'm going to use those open ends to add an addition to this design. The addition might be pulling those loose ends out and connecting it to another component if you're doing a larger piece. Or as we see here, I'm just going to add a circle into this corner and I'll just copy that into the other corners as well. I'll add like a little flower doodad in the center of those just to make them a little more decorative. 
So I still have to deal with those loose ends. What I'm going to do is just guide them around that circle to act like a little bit of a border as I connect the two loose ends to each other in each corner. So basically what I've done is I've used the fact that I've broken the design to bring the lines outside of the design and connect them in a different manner. And here, of course, I've just joined them to each other around that little circle. But you can imagine if I had a larger component outside, having those loose ends available to connect the other design is really helpful. And it's just one more way that you can manipulate the grid pattern and make your work a little more unique and personal. So to finish off this design, I still have to do my weavings. I'm going to start at the top there and erase it in one direction. The arrow shows the direction that I'll continue erasing in. So if I've just done an over, the next needs to be an under, and then an over on the other side of the little circle, and so on until the knot has been completely woven. And if I remove the dots, you can see the final pattern. So in both examples, we started with a three big dot by three big dot armed cross. But by making that minor adjustment in each of the corners, we've ended up with two very different designs. And we've also seen how basically introducing an error to break the pattern can be used to connect the pattern in a slightly different way, or even have the loose ends pull out and join a whole different knot. And if you want to try these two patterns yourself, I've made a PDF worksheet that you can download and give it a shot. For homework, try making your own cross designs, one with the normal jut out like we did in the borders and frames tutorial, and try some with the offset technique, and try joining up those two loose ends in some different ways and seeing what you can make. So that's a few different ways you can tackle doing a Celtic cross design. If you run into trouble with anything, please leave a note in the comments below and I'll try to answer as best I can. Before you go, don't forget, subscribe to my channel and ring the little bell so you're kept up to date on future tutorials. These and many more techniques are covered in my book, Creating Celtic Knotwork by Dover Publications. Please consider picking up a copy if you want to learn more about drawing Celtic art. If you'd like to support my channel or my website, please consider signing up as a Patreon member. There's lots of different tiers. I'll include a link below. You know, patrons of Celtic art are really unique. This is often considered a dead art form because of course the Celts lived so long ago. But the support of people like my patrons just really helps encourage it as an art form today. So making it a modern art form that is still alive and well. And that's it for this week everyone. Bye!